Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Aitza. I talk about travel, finance, petite fashion, books, being black in Spain. And if you're not new here, thanks so much for coming back. Today, we are going to talk about dating and using Tinder while traveling. Um, because it's something that I've been doing for the last year, that I've been solo traveling. And I get a lot of questions from like other solo female travelers I have met while staying at hostels and just doing walking tours um, from some of my friends that I've made here abroad and back stateside from my cousins and whatnot. So I thought, why not just make a video and get it out there? So let's get started. So one of the first questions I always get asked is how do I go about opening my tinder to make a date basically um i always put in my profile um that i'm american uh visiting on holiday or whatever vacation um because i'm abroad i put that in spain i put the languages that i speak or understand um and then like i keep my original profile which i need to look at right now to see because when I'm at home, I am very trash at, <laughs> at using Tinder. Like, crap, no, what am I doing? I just did something. I'm very trash at using Tinder. Um, but my profile says, okay, que sera, sera. What will be, will be. Five foot two bundle of sass and sarcasm who drinks wine and whiskey. American in Spain. And then when I'm traveling, I put, like, visiting the beautiful land of Milan and enjoying wine or something like that. You know, just very basic. Um, I have a mix of different photos to kind of show like what my interests are and like my hair in various states because I never know how my hair will be like when I'm traveling. Those are my basics. And then from there, I just swipe on people to see what's happening and what's going on. Um, and then depending on how the conversation is going, I'll ask them, you know, like, are they a native to the city? Did they move from somewhere else? Um... If they have any tips or recommendations for me, and then once I say that, that is kind of like a segue into to be their offering for us to meet or for me saying, well, if you're free, we should meet at this time, um, and then we go from there. Um, another question I get asked a lot is about safety and do I have any qualms or concerns about doing Tinder dates or Bumble dates all abroad in an unknown country, especially traveling alone? Um, like what if someone kidnaps you or rapes you or something like that? Um, like what would you do? What would you have it? And I'm already a kind of cautious person. And when I'm traveling alone, well actually when I'm traveling in general, I have a few friends and my mom who I share my location with. So I'm like, this is what I'm doing, but sending a picture or whatever, just to be safe. Um, so they know when they can check in on me periodically. We have um, a system, so if I'm like feeling uncomfortable, they'll know like something is going on, be alert, or I'm fine, or whatever, um, just so they don't worry. And it's worked out for me. Luckily, I haven't had any bad experience or encounters, thank God. Um, so I think that has helped because I've started off on a good note. And like when I'm using Tinder, I also kind of ask like questions that will kind of read out BS, um, weed, weed out BS that or that strikes me as weird or whatever. Like, we are always meeting in a public place. I'm not letting you pick me up. Um, I'm not going back to your place with you. Like, just, you know, just for safety reasons and things like that, that I don't want to take that precaution. I don't want to take that risk um, of putting myself in a situation that potentially could go wrong. Um, then, then I know I would blame myself just because of how I am and how my mind works. Um, so I'm very... I'm there. I'm receiving first. That's it. <laughs> Which is weird because I'm going on Tinder dates in foreign countries, but I am receiving first. But this is me doing the most that I would do. So, yeah. Another question I get asked a lot is what kind of dates I go on. I'm doing these. We've gone to dinner. I've done um, museum dates where we just go to some of the popular museums in the city because I typically am going to big tourist areas. Um, I've had lunch in a park before, which was nice, like a cute little picnic. 
Um, I have done like a stroll and we just get aperitivo and drinks or tapas and drinks and just chill. What else? Mm, yeah, that's about it. Typically on law food and talking. I mean, it's been a variety of different kind of guys that I've gone on a date with. Um, doctors, a lawyer, people who work in finance, uh, someone in consulting before, someone who was a teacher. Um, yeah, it's just kind of like been a mix of things. It works out that way because my I don't go out on dates with anyone that's younger than me. So every year I just increase like my my minimum age to one. Um, to whatever I will be that year or what I currently am. And then it's either 10 or 12 years plus than me. So right now I'm 25, so my settings are set from 25 to, I believe, 37? I mean, we can check. Uh, 25 to 38, so a 13-year difference. Um, because you just, get a, you just get a wide variety of things, and you meet people, and I think your conversations can skew differently, and because of my own personal friend group I am normally the younger one so I feel like it's easier for me to converse with and have topics about topics to talk about with someone who's older than me um yeah another question I've been asked fairly frequently is do you ever feel pressured or obligated to have sex or anything along the sexual spectrum not just penetration, um, because you are going out on these dates and possibly having dinner or drinks or whatever bought for you. And there's always no, like, no, I just don't. Okay, you bought me a drink, nice. You bought me dinner, nice. Okay, that does not mean that that requires me to, in turn, perform a sexual act. It just doesn't. Um, it's just, I, like, leave it as very casual. That's how it is. Um, and that I'm always prepared to pay for myself because you just never know how it goes. But typically I have gone out or dated in countries where you have a bit more, I don't want to say toxic masculinity, <laughs> but it kind of is like machismo or um, I guess paternalism where like it's their norm if they're going out on a date or they invite someone um, to pay. Um, so like if I ever suggested it, I'm always prepared to pay just because I sent the invitation, but that typically doesn't happen. Um, and I think I paid for myself like maybe twice. Um, yeah, but no, like, you know, it's just very chill. Um, I've only repeated a Tinder date while traveling abroad twice. Um, yeah, so that is what it is. That didn't lead anywhere. Mm. So yeah, it's so like that's that's just like how I approach these things. Like it's just very casual. We're going out for drinks, going out for dinner. It's like me just biding my time, finding something to do, um, because I've seen the sights and then all that. Um, and I just want something different to do, and also to like experience dating culture in another country, and you get to learn about the people. You can learn about the cool places to go, the do's and don'ts. Um, and it's good practice, um, I will say, which I guess can kind of combine like the next question that kind of gets asked, asked a lot as a black woman. Um, it's very interesting to see how I am perceived abroad, um, and who I match with and who I don't match with. Um, typically it's white men or brown men, never black men. I even did an experience, an experience, an experiment back in September when I was in Madrid, because there is a larger population of black people in general there. Um, so if I found the black man attractive, um, which was quite a number of them, I would swipe right on them. And of the 30 I swiped right on, five of them matched with me. Now it could be I didn't pop up on their queue, um, or more than likely I'm just not their type, which for me personally doesn't offend me. I'm open to dating anyone as long as you're not racist or homophobic or sexist, um, or just a complete idiot. But for some people, like, they only want to date within their race, which is fine. And for that, that, like, could be a downer or, like, something that just, like, craps on their self-esteem. 
Um, so that is something to consider. Um, and because I am dating around Europe, so majority white nations, um, and the nations that aren't majority white, that or the ones that are white and have a large black population tend to be francophone countries, and I don't speak French. That kind of like cuts down on my black population in general um, that I would be able to converse with and just talk to in general. Um, but yeah, but that's not something that really bothers me. And when it comes to like fetishization, experience racism and things like that, um, if I ever match with someone and I get those, oh, like, my beautiful African queen or like I want to try chocolate or whatever like that, it's an immediate block. Like, no, I'm just not entertaining that because you're setting the tone off wrong. I am not a plaything or a toy or something for you to just dip your foot in. Like, no, so you can brag about your homeboys like that. No, just not. Mm -mm. And you should have enough common sense not to say that to someone. So that already tells me that our personalities would not mix. And I feel like I, I would feel like I was wasting my time so that's another thing that just gets nixed off for me as well.